Get 30 days Audible free trial with the link in the description. Ricardo, Richard, Leva Munoz Ramirez, February 29, 1960 to June 7, 2013, dubbed the Valley Intruder, as his attacks were first clustered in the San Gabriel Valley, the Walkin' Killer, and most infamously the Night Stalker, was an American serial killer, serial rapist, kidnapper, child molester, and burglar whose crime spree took place in California between June 1984 and August 1985. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1989, Ramirez's childhood is considered an influence on his crimes. Abused by his father, Ramirez began developing gruesome, macabre interests in his early and mid-teens from his older cousin, Miguel, Mike, Ramirez, who allegedly also taught him some of the military skills that he would go on to use during his year-long killing spree. Ramirez also cultivated a strong interest in Satanism and the occult. By the time he had left his home in Texas and moved to California at the age of 22, he had begun frequently using cocaine. Ramirez would often commit burglaries to support his drug addiction, many of which were later frequently accompanied by murders, attempted murders, rapes, and assaults. Ramirez's highly publicized home invasion and murder spree terrorized the residents of the greater Los Angeles area and later the San Francisco Bay Area over the course of 14 months. However, his first known murder occurred as early as April 1984. This crime wasn't connected to Ramirez nor was it known to be his doing until 2009. Ramirez used a wide variety of weapons and different murder methods, including handguns, various types of knives, a machete, a tire iron, and a claw hammer. He was known to attack by punching, pistol whipping, and strangling many of his victims, both manually with his hands and in one instance a ligature, stomped at least one victim to death in her sleep, and tortured another victim by shocking her with a live electrical cord. Ramirez also enjoyed frequently degrading and humiliating his victims, especially those who survived his attacks or whom he explicitly decided not to kill, by forcing them to profess that they loved Satan, or telling them to swear on Satan, if there were no more valuables left in their homes he had broken into and burglarized. In 1989, Ramirez was convicted of 13 counts of murder, 5 attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. The judge who upheld Ramirez's 19 death sentences remarked that his deeds exhibited cruelty, callousness, and viciousness beyond any human understanding. Ramirez never expressed any remorse for his crimes. He died on June 7, 2013, of complications from B-cell lymphoma while awaiting execution on California's death row. Early life and education Ricardo, Richard, Levia Munoz Ramirez was born in El Paso, Texas, on February 29, 1960, to Julian and Mercedes Ramirez, the youngest of their five children. His father Julian, a Mexican national and former Ciudad Juarez policeman who later became a laborer on the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway, was an alcoholic who was prone to fits of anger that often resulted in physical abuse towards his wife and children. Richard began smoking marijuana and drinking alcohol at the age of 10. As a 12-year-old, Richard, or Richie, as he was known to his family, was strongly influenced by his older cousin, Miguel, Mike, Ramirez, a decorated Green Beret combat veteran who himself had already become a serial killer and a rapist during his time in the United States Army in the Vietnam War. Mike often boasted of his brutal war crimes, and shared Polaroid photos with Richard showing Vietnamese women whom he had raped, murdered, and dismembered or decapitated. Richard would later state while incarcerated that he was fascinated, rather than repulsed, by the images and stories Mike shared with him. Mike taught his young cousin some of his military skills, such as killing with stealth and effectively staying hidden in the dark, especially at night. Around this time, Richard began to seek escape from his father's violent temper by sleeping in a local cemetery. Richard was present on May 4, 1973, when Mike fatally shot his wife, Jessie, in the face with a handgun during a domestic argument. Like the graphic photos and stories of his cousin's war crimes in Vietnam, Ramirez would later similarly remark that witnessing the murder wasn't traumatic for him in any traditional sense, but rather a subject of fascination. After the shooting, Richard became sullen and withdrawn from his family and peers. Mike was later found not guilty of Jesse's murder by reason of insanity, with the shooting attributed to post-traumatic stress disorder from his service in Vietnam, he was confined for several years at the Texas State Mental Hospital. Shortly after the shooting, Richard moved in with his older sister, Ruth, and her husband, Roberto, an obsessive, peeping Tom, who took Richard along on his nocturnal exploits. After Mike was released from the mental hosp, Ital in 1977, he sometimes accompanied Richard and Roberto on these voyeuristic walks, spying on women in the nearby areas without their knowledge through their windows. 
By the time Richard had turned 14 in early 1974, he began using LSD frequently. He and Mike resumed bonding over their shared use of drugs and alcohol. It was during this period that Richard began to cultivate an interest in Satanism and the occult. When he reached adolescence, Richard Ramirez began to meld his burgeoning sexual fantasies with graphic violence including forced bondage, BDSM, murder, mutilation, and rape. While still in school, he took a job at a local Holiday Inn and used his passkey to rob sleeping patrons. On at least one occasion, Ramirez molested two children in an elevator at the hotel, but he was never reported or prosecuted for this act. His employment ended abruptly after Ramirez attempted to rape a woman in her hotel room and was caught in the act by the victim's husband. Although the husband beat Ramirez at the scene, criminal charges were dropped when the couple, who lived out of state, declined to return to Texas to testify against him. Ramirez dropped out of Jefferson High School in the ninth grade. In 1982, at the age of 22, he moved to and settled permanently in California. It was around this time that Ramirez began to use cocaine, which quickly became his substance of choice, and began to commit theft and burglaries to procure money for sustaining his addiction. He lived nomadically between San Francisco and Los Angeles County during this time prior to his incarceration. He was known to frequently travel between the northern and southern areas of California both before and during his year-long crime spree. Murders On April 10, 1984, Ramirez murdered Mei Leung, a nine-year-old Chinese-American girl, in the basement of his apartment building in the Tenderloin District of San Francisco. Leung was with her eight-year-old brother and reportedly looking for a lost $1 bill when Ramirez approached the girl and told her to follow him into the basement to find it. Once they were in the basement, Ramirez beat, strangled and raped Leung before stabbing her to death with a switchblade, hanging her partially nude body from a pipe by her blouse. The killing was not linked to Ramirez until 2009, when his DNA was matched to a sample obtained at the crime scene. In 2016, officials disclosed evidence of a second suspect, identified through another DNA sample retrieved from the scene, who is believed to have been present at Leung's murder. Authorities have not publicly identified the suspect, described as being a juvenile at the time, and have not brought charges due to the lack of evidence. Night Stalker Crimes On June 28, 1984, 79-year-old Jenny Vincow was found brutally murdered in her apartment in Glassell Park, Los Angeles. She had been stabbed repeatedly in the head, neck, and chest while asleep in her bed, and her throat slashed so deeply that she was nearly decapitated. Ramirez's fingerprint was found on a mesh screen he removed to gain access through an open window. This, Ramirez's second known murder, would go on to establish his pattern of breaking into homes, committing particularly vicious murders, and frequently burglarizing his victims either before or after killing them, which was mainly to support his cocaine addiction and pay his rent. On March 17, 1985, Ramirez attacked 22-year-old Maria Hernandez outside her home in Rosemead, California, shooting her in the face with a .22 caliber handgun after she pulled into her garage. She survived when the bullet ricocheted off the keys she held in her hands as she lifted them to protect herself. Hernandez played dead until Ramirez left the scene. Inside the house, her roommate, Dale Yoshi Okazaki, age 34, heard the gunshot and ducked behind a counter when she saw Ramirez enter the kitchen. When she raised her head to get a look at what had happened, he shot Okazaki once in the forehead, killing her instantly. Within an hour of the Rosemead home invasion, Ramirez pulled 30-year-old Sai Lien, Veronica, Yu out of her car in Monterey Park, shot her twice with a .22 caliber handgun, and fled. She was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital. The two murders, an attempted third, in a single day attracted extensive coverage from news media, who dubbed the attacker, described as curly-haired with bulging eyes and wide-spaced, rotting teeth, the walking killer, and, the valley intruder. On March 27, 1985, Ramirez entered a home that he had burglarized a year earlier just outside of Whittier, California, at approximately 2 a.m. and killed the sleeping Vincent Charles Cesara, age 64, with a gunshot to his head from a .22 caliber handgun. Cesara's wife, Maxine Lavinia Cesara, age 44, was awakened by the gunshot, and Ramirez beat her and bound her hands while demanding to K.N.